Are you tired of feeling overwhelmed when choosing interior design and business management software? Look no further. In these series of videos, I'm going to share my top tips on selecting the perfect software for your interior design business without the hassle. Now, let's be real. There are plenty of software options to choose from, and it can be overwhelming to figure out which one is right for you. When I first started researching this video, I thought I'd have around six options to present, but boy, was I wrong. I found 12 options, which I'm going to compare and contrast in this series of videos. To help me, I've created a table on the Freeform app that's chock full of information and comparisons, and I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to check out. So firstly, let's talk about business management software and what we as interior designers hope that it will do for us. I've done plenty of research and let me tell you, there's no perfect software. As an early adopter of any app that might be useful to my business, I've tried out so many apps over the years. And still, the truth is that no all-in-one software can compete with the dedicated ones that do one specific thing well. But before you decide on any software, you should know what your requirements are. Ask yourself what your business needs to grow and thrive and work from there. And it's guaranteed that if you sign up for any of these platforms, there will be features that you don't use because you prefer another app. Now let's dive into the other criteria that you should consider when choosing the right software for your interior design business. The first thing I would look at is the cost. Don't assume that the most expensive software is the best, but don't fall for the cheapest one either. Remember that once you've invested your hard earned money into software, it will take time to set up. So make sure that it will save you enough time to warrant the investment. Also make sure that it has the functionality that makes it worthwhile to invest your time. As I said before, start off with a list of all the things that you would like your app to do. Next, take into account the location of the developer. As the interior design industry tends to be location-based, choosing a platform that caters to the units of measurement and the currency you use is essential. Thinking about the integrations that your app could have is also crucial. You may have accounting software that links with apps that you already use, such as QuickBooks or Xero, or you might already use an app like Acuity or Calendly to schedule meetings. So being able to integrate these apps could save you a lot of time. And once you've decided on the software, the user interface should be easy to navigate. You should be able to find the buttons and do what you need to do quickly and efficiently. Another criteria is collaboration. Interior designers work with many stakeholders and depending on how large your business is, you may be working with quite a few clients, contractors, vendors, and trades, let alone the staff that you have in your office. And finally, work out how you want to manage information. Information management is vital as designers need to store information such as images, spec sheets, and contacts. So to help you understand what an effective business management software can do for you, I'll explain interior designers tasks and the problems that they face. Now this may seem very basic, but it's important to understand that an interior design project involves many moving parts, including materials, fixtures and fittings and equipment. Effective software should help you manage these things and reduce the friction between the stages. As we mentioned before, the main goal of any business management information should be saving you time and stress by keeping all the information that you need in one place. And to explain the tasks that an interior designer does, let's start with the end result, which is, of course, the creation of an interior. This is made up of a lot of moving parts, but essentially we have materials, fixtures and fittings and equipment that we have to buy, install and manage. So we buy our materials and our fixtures and our fittings from vendors, and we might charge a markup to our clients. We also have to manage trades who install those fittings and we might have to charge a management fee. And then we manage how our materials and fixtures are put together, so we charge a design fee. And all these fees add up to the total amount that a client pays us to do our work. And we collect this information because we want the fees to be correct. We also want to be as profitable as possible, and that means charging for everything that we do. And finally, we have to pay our taxes and recover our administrative costs. 
we probably want to use this information later for analysis to improve our performance. And therefore, efficient business management software should help us manage our fees, have a time tracker, for example, to record and justify our charges, and help us schedule and procure materials and fittings. We could also think about whether we need to be able to track design approvals and keep records of design approvals. We also want to think about whether we want it to manage our tasks and then store all our information in one place ready to be used or shared. We also might want to think about whether we want our business information system to actually manage our customer leads. So things like a CRM to watch how clients move throughout the design process. There are quite a number of functionalities that we should consider. And as I said at the beginning of this video, it's incredibly hard to do it all extremely well. So this is why when I said decide what functionalities you already have, what apps you already use, and think about the software that you don't want to give up, and then take that capability out of your analysis. For example, let's say that you use Harvest Time Tracker to track your time. It's a pretty powerful app. It allows you to create detailed and accurate time reports. And you can also manage things like expenses within it. So you probably shouldn't give that up for a time tracker where you must manually enter the information. And this would lead to a lot of inaccuracies and lost revenue because you didn't want to pay $130 per person per year, which is probably less than one hour of their billable time. It just doesn't make sense. So if there is something that you already have in your business that works really well, make sure that you're not paying for another app that offers the same thing, but is less efficient. So in these videos, I'm going to start talking about the app that I use, Programmer. Now I use it because I'm based in Australia. It suits the way that I'm working at the moment. However, okay. I've also worked in Hong Kong and used both a UK program called Estimac, as well as some other programs when I was testing out which one I wanted to use. So the goal of these videos is to show you Programmer so you have a baseline of which you can compare your app that you might be considering if you're not based in Australia. You probably have more of an idea about what they can do for you. Now, if I've missed an app, please comment in the description and I'm going to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description for the comparison diagram for you to explore later, as well as links to all the apps we discussed. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.